Hi, this is the <clears throat> this is the second video on that uh, the lecture about the probability and statistics review. Um, this page just talks about the difference between a population and a sample. Um, the population, so maybe I'll change pen color. How about that? Um, it would be nice if it was a little bit thicker, huh? Very strong. Um, population is a set of all items of interest so the whole let's say entire rose holman population um, a parameter is a numerical summary <clears throat> some number that describes that population so it could be um, it could be the mean it could be the standard deviation it could be you know proportion of people that feel a certain way but it's it's one number that describes that population it's called a parameter um, parameters are usually Greek letters so you know you'll see mu for the mean of a population sigma for standard deviation lambda for failure rate rho for population correlation coefficient um, you know I think the big thing is population you take everybody and then you compute numerical summaries and they're called parameters and then from a population we can get a sample which is, is a subset of the population when you compute a numerical summary on a sample you get a statistic and again it's just some characteristic of that sample it's one number that summarizes something such as the mean of a sample which we would call x bar um, we use statistics eventually to make inferences about population parameters so i might use um, let's go with a pen uh, for example i'm going to use x bar to eventually make a prediction about um, mu which is the population parameter okay so there's some of the statistics of interest that we usually find for a sample and just a reminder a little summary here um, populations are for the big group so this is a nice to me just that's what a population is and that's what a sample is so you know if you've taken probability I think you know mostly we work with the population because we're thinking if we had the unpopular entire population here's a model that um, here, here's a you know equation that models that situation and when we talk about a sample we just collect usually some data and this to me is usually um, the statistics so um, I just have a little example here let's go over um, let me see okay so a certain process for making integrated circuits has been in use for a long time. Um, it is known that 12% of circuits it produces are defective. That's not so good. Um, so they're inventing some kind of new process to see how it compares to the old process. Um, they take a simple random sample of 100 circuits. So in other words, think of all these circuits, the population of all circuits sitting in this big bin, and they randomly select 100 of them. Every circuit has an equally likely chance of being in the sample. Um, when they grabbed out 100, 12 were defective. So, um, let me see, one of the engineers su suggests that the test proves, so pulling out 12, that the new process is not better than the old process since the percent of defectives is the same. Um, you know, this was one sample, even though it was a simple random sample, I wouldn't necessarily say just that one, um, that one test proves sorry this is the other video is uploading I wouldn't say that that one test proves necessarily for sure that um, the new process is not any better than the old maybe even though it was a random sample I mean it's very possible that the new um, that the new process only produces three percent it was really strange that we got 12 but you know it would maybe you know with 12 and 12 you start to think well maybe but it's I wouldn't say it's conclusive um, I wouldn't say for sure now I'm sure that the new process is no better um, assume that there had been only 11 defective circuits would this have proven that the new process is better no I mean again with only you know a sample size 111 being defective I mean there's a lot of variation natural variation so I don't think 11 shows it's better automatically let me see if the proportion of defectives is a lot less than 12 percent is it reasonable to conclude that the new process is better uh, I think if it's a lot less I'm starting to gear more toward maybe but again it's just one sample I mean everything in statistics is usually it depends and I'm starting maybe to lean more toward 
yes, the new process is better, but I wouldn't be conclusive yet. Um, if the proportion is only slightly less than 12%, would you, is it reasonable, is it, it is not reasonable to conclude that new process is better. Yeah, probably. I mean, I'm pretty, you know, if you just get a little less than 12%, one sample, again, I'm leaning more toward maybe it isn't better, but I can't really say for sure. It was just, you know, one random sample. What percent is defective in your minds leads to the new process is better? You know, you know, it's hard to, we have to know the standard deviation and everything like that, but I mean, definitely the smaller the proportion, it's more leading me to believe that the new process is better. Um, yeah, you could actually do, you know, if it is 12%, what's the likelihood of seeing only, you know, three or less or two or less? So there's statistical ways to do this using the binomial random variable saying, you know, if it really is the same at 12% was the probability we're only going to see two or three. So I don't know what percent in my mind leads me to believe the new process is better. Definitely the smaller, the better. You know, if I only had grabbed one or two percent, I'm thinking the new process is better. But certainly there's a cutoff, and that's why we do that whole um, type 1, type 2 error with alpha and beta. Um, the smaller, the better. But um, I don't want to make conclusions unless I ran serious statistical tests and tried to figure out what's the probability of seeing, you know, two or less if the, the truth is supposed to be 12. But, you know, we'll be doing hypothesis testing. But now just, just to get that flavor in your mind that even when you do a random sample, um, it's hard to make conclusions uh, with just one random sample unless something is very extreme, you know, you don't want to be too conclusive. Okay, so that was just uh, a lecture on sample versus population. And I should be able to stop this. Hi, this, um, these lectures go with the, the review handouts I gave you for statistics notation and probability concept. There's the front page of it so you can remember what it looks like. And um, in class, we already did the matching game with statistical notation just a little reminder there if there's any of those you don't know there are some that you're probably don't remember that well that's all right but I mean, you want to make sure to know the main ones um, let me see I get a pen probability of a um, that's of course an important one and we'll do a lot of f of x which is just that density function and u I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't remember capital F I think x bar you know s Hopefully you remember Z is a standard normal, but yeah, I mean, that's partly uh, we have to review to, re to remember these terms, so that's fine. Let's go down. So um, I want to break these up just a couple pages for video. This one is just, uh, these first two pages now are just reminding you about the branches of statistics and population versus sample um, definition of statistics. It's just a discipline where you're concerned with obtaining data, you want to do it as efficiently as possible, and you know this can be very hard. There's lots of ways to sample to get good data. Um, once we get it, we'd like to analyze it in order to model a population. So, I mean, we collect data, we eventually want to know something about the population that we're gathering the data from. Um, I like this quote by uh, Schuhart and Deming. Um, not so much are we worried about making everybody a statistician, but having engineers and others be able to think statistically to, you know, improve the workplace and, um, you know, things that you should be noting to people about, you know, it's important to have a random sample. It's important before you run certain tests that you have nice normally distributed data. So that's what that's trying to say. Um, reminder, there's two kinds of statistics. Uh, one of them is just descriptive statistics. And descriptive statistics is just you get a sample of data and you describe it either numerically or graphically. Um, you know, you find the important I don't know, what do you, important number summaries about the data set. So that might be, you know, the mean of the data, the median, the, the, let me see, standard deviation. So they're just numerical summaries of the data. They're called statistics. 
and we can also use graphs to do it, you know, stem and leaf plots, you might not remember, but I'm sure you've seen histograms. Um, we did box plots um, in 223. Um, so here's kind of the layout for the different kinds of statistics. Um, the other kind is inferential statistics, and that's what I think, I mean, that's what I think of as statistics, as you, you get a sample of the data, and then you want to make inferences about the population that you obtained this, the sample from. I mean, you know, I could pull you guys and get a, it wouldn't be a random sample, but I could pull you on GPAs and then make some kind of inference about the GPA of all students at Rose Holman. So that's what I'm trying to collect that sample to make to make some kind of statement then about the population it came from. So here to me is a nice review of really sampling. You know, you have this big population, right? And then we usually spend time in statistics talking about how to sample. You have like a simple random sample, a stratified sample, different kinds of sampling. Um, and from that sample, I mean, from that sampling method, you get a sample number of values and from there that's where we can do our descriptive statistics we can describe that sample um, you can get a mean of that sample you can get a median of that sample you can get a standard deviation so you can just describe that sample eventually what you'd like to do though is take that sample and say okay let's say I got X bar um, for our class I just averaged asked for the GPA and I averaged for our group of students and let's say I got a 2.8. Um, I mean really what I want to eventually do is say is that a good estimate of the population mean and the population mean is mu. You probably remember that notation. Mu is uh, the mean of a population. Um, can I use that sample that I just took from your class and I know it's not random to say something about the true mean population of GPAs for all Rose Holman students. So that to me is inferential statistics. You're taking a sample and you're inferring something about your population. So um, let me see how long I am so far if it's, yeah, I think that's long, I'll cut it. So that's, um, that's just the video then for page number two. What statistics, two branches, and um, really just the two branches. Okay. Hi, this, um, these lectures go with the, the review handouts I gave you for statistics notation and probability concept. There's the front page of it so you can remember what it looks like. And um, in class, we already did the matching game with statistical notation. Just a little reminder there. If there's any of those you don't know, there are some that you're probably don't remember that well that's all right but I mean, you want to make sure to know the main ones um, let me see I get a pen probability of a um, that's of course the important one and we'll do a lot of f of x which is just that density function and mu I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't remember capital F I think x bar you know s hopefully you remember z is a standard normal but yeah I mean that's partly uh, we have to review to re to remember these terms so that's fine let's go down so um, I want to break these up just a couple pages for video this one is just uh, these first two pages now are just reminding you about the branches of statistics and population versus sample um, definition of statistics it's just a discipline where you're concerned with obtaining data, you want to do it as efficiently as possible, and you know this can be very hard. There's lots of ways to sample to get good data. Um, once we get it, we'd like to analyze it in order to model a population. So, I mean, we collect data, we eventually want to know something about the population that we're gathering the data from. Um, I like this quote by uh, Schuhart and Deming. Um, not so much are we worried about making everybody a statistician, but having engineers and others be able to think statistically to, you know, improve the workplace and, um, you know, things that you should be noting to people about, you know, it's important to have a random sample. It's important before you run certain tests that you have nice normally distributed data. So that's what that's trying to say. Um, reminder, there's two kinds of statistics. Uh, one of them is just descriptive statistics. 
and descriptive statistics is just you get a sample of data and you describe it either numerically or graphically um, you know you find the important I don't know what do you important number summaries about the data set so that might be you know the mean of the data the median the the let me see standard deviation so they're just numerical summaries of the data they're called statistics and we can also use graphs to do it you know stem and leaf plots you might not remember but I'm sure you've seen histograms uh, we did box plots um, in 223 um, so here's kind of the layout for the different kinds of statistics um, the other kind is inferential statistics and that's what I think I mean that's what I think of as statistics as you you get a sample of the data and then you want to make inferences about the population that you obtain this the sample from I mean you know I could pull you guys and get a it wouldn't be a random sample but I could pull you on GPAs and then make some kind of inference about the GPA of all students at Rose Holman so that's what I'm trying to collect that sample to make to make some kind of statement then about the population it came from so here to me is a nice review of really s sampling you know you have this big population right and then we usually spend time in statistics talking about how to sample you have like a simple random sample a stratified sample different kinds of sampling um, and from that sample I mean from that sampling method you get a sample number of values and from there that's where we can do our descriptive statistics we can describe that sample um, you can get a mean of that sample you can get a median of that sample you can get a standard deviation so you can just describe that sample eventually what you'd like to do though is take that sample and say okay let's say I got X bar um, for our class I just averaged asked for the GPA and I averaged for our group of students and let's say I got a 2.8 um, I mean really what I want to eventually do is say is that a good estimate of the population mean and the population mean is mu you probably remember that notation mu is uh, the mean of a population um, can I use that sample that I just took from your class and I know it's not random to say something about the true mean population of GPAs for all Rose Holman students so that to me is inferential statistics you're taking a sample and you're inferring something about your population so um, let me see how long I am so far if it's yeah I think that's long I'll cut it so that's um, that's just the video then for page number two what statistics two branches and um, really just the two branches. Okay.